Is John Wick a Matrix training program? A lot of us think that there are ties between two of Keanu Reeves' most famous roles, and the evidence does seem to point in that direction. Oh, and there's also the fact that the movie has several direct references to the classic science fiction film. So in today's videos, let's discuss what we've got to back up this theory. First off, let's talk about the director's cameo in the movie. Chad, aka Handsome Chad, played by Stahelski in The Matrix Resurrections, could be seen as a simple cameo, but he's got ties to Reeves director Lena Wachowski and the franchise as a whole which makes his appearance more interesting. The actor talked about the director's role in the movie and said that he and Wachowski really like each other. He went on to say that the guy was trying to weave together a lot of things in terms of life and art for all the people and artists in the film, which emphasized the meta vibe of the movie as well. But he thinks that the director found it funny that Stahelski was married to the Matrix version of Trinity, who was called Tiffany in the movie. This is because because he also played Neo in the first two Matrix movies. Now, when you look at it that way, Trinity was still with Neo. And at the end of the movie, Chad tries one last time to pull her away from our hero, but she doesn't let him. Instead, she fights back and knocks him out, which shows that he's part of the Matrix. Up next, why John Wick 2's Matrix reference is easily overlooked. At the end of Chapter 2, after John kills Santino and breaks the Continental's rule about not doing business on the Holy Grounds, Winston Scott freezes time in Central Park. That's very different from the way time moves in The Matrix, when Lawrence Fishburne's character Morpheus stops time in the second act and Keanu is still more Thomas Anderson than Neo. Since the two scenes take place at different times and in different places, it's easy to miss this reference. And finally, wake up John, The Matrix has you. Guns, lots of guns is exactly what Neo says in The Matrix as he and Trinity get ready for the famous lobby scene. In both cases, he got exactly what he wanted. Both characters killed a a lot of guards and security staff with weapons in their jackets and John Wick, well, you can probably guess what happens next. The quote showing up in Chapter 3 is a fun meta moment that feels even more important now that Resurrections came out. It's also a wink and a nod to Keanu Reeves fans who've watched him get better and better as an action star since Speed in 1994. Not just this, but it's also a nod to the past of director Chad Stahelski. The guy was a Hollywood stunt coordinator before he became a director. During this time, he dressed up as a stunt double for a famous young action star in a science fiction movie that twisted reality. And yes, he did stunts for Reeves in The Matrix. As we mentioned earlier, he even shows up as Trinity's fake husband, which adds another layer to this already pretty meta reference. But this isn't the only time The Matrix is mentioned in the John Wick movies. Now let's talk about how The Matrix already told you that it can continue without Neo and Trinity. First off, let's see how some of the best Matrix stories weren't about Neo and Trinity. Every Matrix movie stands out on its own, but several other stories in it don't take place in the movies. Now it's common for franchises like the MCU to have expanded universes that span different types of media, and the Matrix universe was one of the first to do this. The four action live movies, the Animatrix, comics, and video games are all part of this awesome expanded universe, which doesn't have a name. Neo and Trinity may be the main characters in the Matrix movies, but the Animatrix showed that there were other interesting stories that didn't involve Neo and Trinity. For example, the hero only shows up in one of the eight animatrix. Matrix shorts. The animated film is still the best example of how full this universe is. It's a collection of eight animated shorts directed by seven different people. Most of them take place in the simulation and were made to promote The Matrix Reloaded. Except for Trinity in A Detective Story and Neo in The Kid, this anthology uses original characters and doesn't depend on what happens in the movies. In terms of plot, Final Flight of the Oasis is the only short that connects to The Matrix Reloaded. It shows the Sentinel attack that Morpheus talks about at the beginning of Reloaded. Up next, let's talk about the best parts of Animatrix. Some of its best parts don't have much to do with the movies, because that's when the directors were able to come up with new ideas. The Animatrix is canon, but the shorts don't have to follow any rules of lore or time. In each short, a different group of characters is shown. The rules of the Matrix aren't very strict. In fact, it shows that there are no limits to the kinds of stories that can be told in the Matrix world. World. Even though none of the shorts tried to be like The Matrix 1999, they all felt like they were set in the same world. 
Moving on to how the Matrix universe is much more than Neo's journey. He was more than the one because the previous five ones were all doomed to fail. Neo was the story's hero, the chosen one who broke the machine cycle. So it makes sense why his journey will always be what defines the original Matrix trilogy. And in the same way, Trinity and Neo beat the analyst in Resurrections to start over in the Matrix. But compared to how long the simulation has been going on in the real world, the things that that happen in the movies are only a small part of the whole story. The movies don't take place in 2199 like Morpheus thinks they do. Instead, they take place close to 2699. In the first machine war, which ended with humans burning the sky and building the first simulation, happened around the end of the 20th century. Then, there are more than 600 years of stories in its universe before Neo is even born. So, even though no one before him beat the machines at their own game, that doesn't mean that a Matrix story that takes place before the movie itself can't work. Let's take the story of the first one as an example. How they'd play the machine's game to save Zion from being destroyed is an interesting story in and of itself. Not to mention, Matrix Resurrections put the franchise's future in check. Resurrections was first shown in theaters and on HBO Max on the same day. It made $157 million at the box office on a budget of $190 million. Even taking into account the pandemic scenario and the fact that the movie came out on the same day, Day, the Matrix Resurrections didn't do well at the box office. The whole franchise had one shot to cash in on the nostalgia of Neo and Trinity's return, but that magic can no longer be recreated. The 2021 film was the first of its kind to come out in almost 20 years. It was supposed to be a big deal, but the way it came out made that impossible. Not just this, but its ending didn't leave much room for Matrix 5 to continue the story. And that wasn't just because of money. Neo and Trinity's story in it felt like a very self-contained adventure. They got back together 60 years after the Matrix revolutions to stop the analysts' plans and make another version of the Matrix. In fact, Resurrections is also a meta-story on many levels, and it kind of shuts the door on another sequel or reboot. Despite all that, we'd agree that this movie introduces a lot of new ideas like The Analyst and The New Smith, but it's more of an idea to the Matrix trilogy than the start of a new one. And finally, Matrix 5 can be an original Matrix story without rebooting it. Even though we just saw the last movie of the series in 2021, that still doesn't mean that the franchise can't keep going. So even if Matrix 5 isn't going to happen right away, the Matrix IP is too important to be ignored for good. And if it ever comes back, it would take ideas from shows like The Animatrix and comics. Now, don't get us wrong, we don't mean that the next one should copy what's already been shown in others. Instead, it would try to make something new in the Matrix world without restarting Neo's story. Maybe a Matrix prequel would have unlimited potential. Who knows? A new Matrix story that's got nothing to do with two of our favorite characters wouldn't even have to take place at a certain time in the Matrix timeline. In fact, the best way to bring back the mystery of the first movie, which any of the sequels were unable to do, would be to tell a story that isn't clear where it fits in the Matrix. A story that takes place right after the first machine war or a few years before Neo would both work. And because of how its simulation works, we're sure none of us would be able to tell the difference. And on that note, that's a wrap for this video. So what do you think about all these connections between the two franchises? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. Alright guys, we'll see you in the next one.